and salutations my dearest friends my name is Samantha and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite historic romances of all time. Hello how are you welcome or welcome back to my channel welcome back welcome back welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about my top 10 favorite historic romances of all time Oh my gosh, it was so hard to narrow down this list. I knew I wanted to do like a top favorite historic. I haven't done a historical romance video in a while, I feel like. A few years ago, I did the historical romance readathon, fell in love with historical romances, and that is literally the only reason I created my channel. I thought I would do this video where I talk about like my top, top, top favorites out of all the ones I've read. It was really hard. I sat down and just started creating a list, and I think I had at one point like 35 books on the list. I was like, Sam, nobody wants to hear you talk about. 35 books right now okay narrow it down N narrow it down if you like the historical romance content i do have a historical romance book club with my friend jessica from peace of books we're called the historical hellions we read a historical romance every single month we focus on historicals published before the year 2000 because we're trying to read like some classic old bodice rippers you know what i mean like that's what we're focusing on i love that book club and we do have an instagram where we announce what books we're reading that month so i will leave that down below and let's just jump in because I know this is going to be a long video. Can you guys guess my first favorite? Go ahead. Guess, guess, guess. What do you think my first favorite is going to be? Let Guess. Just guess. Did you guess right? It's Again the Magic by Lisa Clevis. Duh. I talk about this book endlessly. It is my favorite book of all time. I actually love this book so much. I got a tattoo for it right here in cursive. Again the Magic on my body yaddy yaddy. So I love this book guys. It is a prequel to her very popular Wallflower series which by the way I love that whole series and would recommend every book in that series. This one in particular is an angsty second chance romance between Lady Eileen and McKenna. Childhood sweethearts but there's a bit of a class difference. Our heroine it comes from a family of nobility and our hero is a stable boy so her father does not approve of the relationship. Something happens and I'm not gonna tell you what but something happens that kind of separates them and years and years later McKenna is back with a vengeance he's a self-made man he has a little bit of shmoney on him he's in his revenge era if you will so I love this book oh and there's a side romance in here there's technically like two romances in here between a different set of characters that I really love as well so this book is just perfect I love it I recommend it endlessly you guys you guys know honestly I could have done a top 10 Lisa Claypis it was hard to just pick one of hers because she is one of my favorite authors if 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 I had to like throw in a bonus recommendation, it would be Mine Till Midnight. This is the first in the Hathaway series. The way I love this hero, I love Cameron so much. So this is like my bonus recommendation, Mine Till Midnight. If you're looking for another Lisa Claypis series to start, I highly recommend the Hathaway series. Okay, my next recommendation is another book that I talk about endlessly, and that is Indigo by Beverly Jenkins, the queen. The reason I love Beverly Jenkins so much is because her books are incredibly romantic, but they're also filled with so much history and culture. I feel like she's a master of her craft. I don't think anyone writes like she does truly, so... I just adore her books, honestly. This book follows Hester and Galen and takes place during the Underground Railroad. Hester's house is a safe house for the Underground Railroad, and that is where she meets our hero under his moniker, the Black Daniel. He is known for freeing African-American slaves, and he's pretty badly injured, so he goes to her safe house, and she nurses him back to health, and it follows the romance. Hands down, without a doubt, this is the most romantic book I've ever read hands down so romantic my dad even read this book and loved it he surprised me by reading this book because he would he knows it's like one of my favorites so i'll leave that video down below it was a lot of fun to film so yeah i just i cherish this one and if i were to get another bookish tattoo it's gonna be for this book right here and again i can't pick like one favorite from beverly jenkins i have so many if i had to give you another beverly jenkins recommendation it would be destiny surrender this is a surprise pregnancy enemy slivers romance I love it. I love it so much. My all-time favorite is Ravished by Amanda Quick. This one is so much fun. It follows our heroine who is a paleontologist. Yeah, she's a paleontologist. Yeah, she, yeah, she like looks for fossils and stuff. Anyways, she has this cave where she looks for fossils. And in one of these caves, she notices that there's these thieves hiding jewels in the caves. So she ends up reaching out to Gideon, who is a Viscount, and he kind of like oversees the land. And she writes him a letter to ask him for his help to catch these jewel thieves. And they end up working together. It's a little bit of a beauty and the Beast retelling. I love Amanda Quick's writing so much because her books almost read like adventure romances. All of her heroines are so strong, so independent, have so much agency, have really cool jobs as well, and there's always like some adventure that they're going on. So if you like adventure romances, I highly recommend Amanda Quick. She's a great one to read from. By the way, I do have a lot of these, like the physical copy of them, but couldn't tell you where they were, okay? My shelves are such a mess right now. Another favorite is A Lady for the Duke by Alexis Hall. Oh my 
gosh I feel like I can't even do this book justice it is so incredibly romantic and emotional like this book I was swooning and crying like I just it's so perfect I like to read like how the author describes this one because I feel like it really embodies the book itself and they describe it as a lush sweeping queer historical romance and that's exactly what it is so it follows Viola and Justin and they were childhood best friends and they also went to war together Viola is transgender and she knew Justin before she transitioned so went to war together she got really badly injured to the point where everyone thought that she was dead in that moment she takes the opportunity to become the person that she always knew that she was and that she kind of loses her friendship with Justin because he doesn't know what had happened to her. Years later they're reconnecting. Justin is struggling with PTSD from the war and at first Justin does not know who Viola is and it follows their romance. When I tell you guys this felt like true soulmates like our characters were it just felt like they were destined to be together the love and the care and the tenderness that this book has just made me weep like a small child I love this book it's so beautiful it's so amazing and I highly recommend it so I actually read this book because of Crystal from Crystal Bookish Life this is one of her favorite books we did a vlog I don't even know how long ago like a couple months ago where we read each other's favorite books and this was one of hers and I just I cherish this recommendation Crystal I love it so much next favorite is If the Duke Demands by Anna Harrington I actually got to meet Anna Harrington at a book signing and get this book signed right this one is signed yeah it's signed <laughs> I was like where's the signature when this book Miranda is in love with her best friend or she thinks she's in love with her best friend okay best friend has never really seen her in that way though so there's a masquerade ball and she decides that she's going to dress up up and seduce him so she sneaks into the castle and sneaks into his room to seduce him but it turns out she snuck into the wrong room the room that she found herself in yeah it's his older brother mm -hmm. our hero his name is Sebastian he is the duke and he's the older brother of the guy that she was trying to seduce and he finds out that she's trying to get with his brother he agrees to help her like get his brother's attention maybe form a little romance between them but of course they fall for each other so it's like the wrong brother type of trope I love this one so much because it's just fun. Both our characters banter was so funny, so witty. This book isn't as emotional as like some of the other ones I mentioned. It's just fun. It's a really easy, quick read. I think I read this one because of Jessica and Lisa. It was off of their recommendation and it's just like a solid historical romance. Next up is No Earls Allowed by Shanna Galen. This is the second book in the Survivor series. So this entire series I would recommend and I have a whole video on me reading this series or most of it at least because it is a lengthy series. This series follows a group of men who fought in the war of Napoleon. Call themselves the survivors because most of their unit ended up dead and they're the only surviving men and each book follows their romances. The reason I love this series so much is because the bromance is like the best. You get to see all of the men come together, support each other. It's doing so much and I just love all the side characters in all of the books so that's why I love this series so much but my favorite out of the series is the second one called No Earls Allowed. This one follows Lady Juliana. She is the daughter of an earl and her sister recently passed away and she's really grieving that and her sister was really big on charity work. She goes to work for an orphan orphanage in a really not so great part of town. It's a safe haven for a lot of young kids and boys who would really be on the streets if this orphanage wasn't open. It wants her to come home, marry into nobility, marry rich. So that is where our hero comes in. Our hero is family friends with her family. Father ends up sending him, his name is Neil, ends up sending him to retrieve her and bring her back to London. But he ends up falling for her and the kids and it's just so cute banter between our characters is so amazing and oh my gosh I forgot this is a virgin hero and a virgin heroine trope which is like my favorite trope ever I love it so freaking much speaking of a virgin hero and a virgin heroine let's talk about the next book that is Spitfire by Christy Caldwell this is a part of the Wicked Wallflower series that Christy Caldwell writes and this is the last book in the series and the only one I would say you can read as a standalone the others you really do have to read in order this book follows Clara and Henry Clara is a madam a lady of the night if you will and she ends up meeting our hero Henry when he is badly beaten in the streets of London she actually saves him from being beaten to death and then takes him back to her house and nurses him back to health the next morning they kind of like go their separate ways they have no idea who they are and then months later our heroine she is trying to open up an opera house and she gets a cease and desist letter to close down her opera house and it's from none other than Henry mm -hmm. that the Henry is a duke and he works for parliament and he's trying to like make some deals in parliament and that is why he ends up sending her the cease and desist letter and she's real pissed she is so freaking mad so she storms into his office and they have a little bit of an enemy lovers romance 
amazing. I adore this one. Oh, no, no, no. This is not a virgin heroine. She's she's a lady of the night. It's just a virgin hero. But anyways, our hero in this one is so freaking cute. Oh, I love this book so much. I don't even know what number we are on. But next up is Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. This is just one of those books that like sticks with you that you just think about constantly. Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. To meet Pam Godwin at Book Bonanza and she's just so effortlessly cool. It was such a joy to meet her. But anyways, this is a romance that follows our heroine Bennett, who is a female pirate. A female pirate. She's so fucking badass. Like, I can't even. I can't even. It is a dark romance, though. I will say that. Read the trigger warnings because it's dork. Our heroine goes through so much. She is married to another pirate, but they're having some troubles. And it's a little bit of a love triangle between her, her husband, and a pirate hunter. That's all you need to know. This has one of the best, best endings of all time. The ending of this book is exactly what I wanted it to be. The plot twist of this book was exactly what I needed it to be. It really delivered. And I'm not going to tell you anything because you need to go into this book blind because it's more enjoyable that way. And oh, I just love this one so much. But again, it's a dark romance. So read the trigger warnings. Next one is a recent addition to my collection. It's not a new release, but I just recently read it because I was reading a bunch of Tessa Dare's backlist. Let me tell you, if you're new to historic romances, you would really love Tessa Dare because her writing is just so humorous and funny, but also emotional and romantic. And it's just like perfect. Like she's a great place to start with historicals. And if I had to pick one Tessa Dare, one Tessa Dare to recommend, it would be The Wallflower Wager. This is to me is like the perfect historical romance. I have literally no complaints about this book. It was just perfect. Okay, let's let me show you. Step back. Stunning. This one is also signed by Miss Tessa Dare. I saw her at two different book signings actually. This book follows Lady Penelope who owns a menagerie of animals. Okay, basically has like a circus of animals in her house. She takes in wounded and injured animals and offers them sanctuary. Hero Gabriel ends up moving in next to her. Absolute hilarity ensues because he's trying to sell the house that he recently bought next to her. But it's kind of hard because she has all of these animals all over her yard and nobody wants to buy the house. Hero is not titled, but he is filthy rich and he strives off like bringing down nobility. So he ends up like striking a deal and like helping each other out because he's trying to sell the house. She's trying to stay in London. And I just love this book so freaking much. The banter between our characters is hilarious, but this book is also so emotional. Our characters have so much trauma that they're healing from. And again, they just heal together. <laughs> I love this book. I love our hero so much. There's something about a non-titled hero. He is like worshiping the ground that she walks on. He would offer the entire world to her on a silver platter for you, for you, my love, my queen. I just love a self-made man. I do, I can't deny it. It's one of my favorite things. Hello, editing Sam here. Just woke up from a nap and I was thinking about this video and I was like, you know what? I cannot post this video without talking about this book. <laughs> So the numbers are gonna be uneven. I said I was giving you 10. You're getting more than 10, okay? I have to talk about one of my favorite books. I can't even believe it. I can't even believe I forgot about it. And that is Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite. This has to be in my top favorite historicals because it's in my top favorite books of all time. This is a sapphic historical romance that is so gorgeous. I just, I just, I just love women, you know? You know, this book, one of our heroines is an astrologer and she used to work with her father and do a lot of her father's correspondences. Father ends up passing away and she's trying to write a book about astrology. She's trying to really make her name in like the scientific community, but it's hard because she is a woman and she doesn't have funds. So she ends up meeting our other heroine who used to be married to a fellow scientist. My hair looks crazy, I'm sorry. Um, our other heroine used to be married to another scientist and is a major donor for the scientific community and she used to write a lot of letters to the father so our heroine goes to live with her and she's kind of like her donor her benefactor and your age gap and they have a romance and I just love them together so freaking much because again it also gave that soulmate energy that's really what I'm looking for when it comes to my historicals our heroine who is married they both have gotten out of like really bad relationships and people who treated them horribly and then they like find love and happiness with each other so it's like oh it's so gorgeous it's so beautiful I don't care okay it, I have to say this one as well and this is more than 10 recommendations but it is what it is Ladies Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite is one of my favorites ever okay back to our regularly scheduled program this last one might shock you guys it might shock you that this ended up on the top 10 but it's here 
it's here and I can't deny it, and that is Kingdom of Dreams by Judith McNaught. <laughs> I have made it very clear on my channel that I am not a fan of Miss Judith McNaught's writing. No, I am not. I've read a lot of her backlist and I think a lot of her books are trash. But this one, you know what? We won't talk about that. We're not going to drag her name through the mud because that's disrespectful. I'm going to be nice. Is a trailblazer for the historical romance genre. She's one of those classic historicals that really built the building blocks for the genre. So for that, I love her. But I wasn't a fan of pretty much any book that she wrote except Kingdom of Dreams. I love Kingdom of Dreams. So that's what we're going to focus on. This one I gave five stars, obviously, if it made it to my top ten. This is a medieval enemy slivers romance. It follows our main characters and their families are rivals. They're kind of like fighting on different sides of the war. Her family sends her to a nunnery for like protection or something like that and he ends up kidnapping her to use her for ransom against her family but it follows their romance. It's pretty heavy enemy slivers but the groveling, the groveling in this book made it for me like I love our hero so much in this book he's an alpha hero but she's a badass heroine and they're the perfect match they truly are and I just love a good medieval romance I had to put this in my top 10 I did and I think that was the 10th recommendation it was so freaking hard to narrow this list down because I there are so many authors that I didn't even mention that I love like Lorraine Heath I love Lorraine Heath her plot twist I also love Nicola Davidson she writes a bunch of like historical romance novellas I have so many favorites but we're gonna leave it here. If you would like to see a part two to this video, please let me know. As always, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. It means the world to me. I hope you guys are all staying happy and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!